I've made a lot of engines in the past, usually in games like Besiege or Scrap Mechanic. There has been one kind of engine though that I've always wanted to make, but requires a simulation with really rigid joints. This is the legendary Swashplate engine, and I wanted to try making it here and seeing if I could power a car. So let's get right into it. So starting out here, the first thing I need to do is make a good base for the engine, and to do that I put down a cube and I started stretching it out. Now once I got it to a size where I thought it was pretty good here, I put down a servo, and this is going to support the engine and also be the output of the engine. So with that done, I put down a rod on it, and you can see here I stretched it out pretty far. Now on that, I put down a disc, and you can see here I made it a little bit bigger. Now with that done, I also put down a counter here, and this is to manually rotate around the disc. Now I'll worry about that in a little bit again, but for now what I wanted to do was rotate the disc, and this is one of the most important parts of the swashplate engine. On the rotated disc, I put down another servo, and on that I put down another disc. That completes the main part of the engine, and I know that was kind of a lot there, but I'll show you why all that's important in a second here. Now after that, you see here I put down a single axis joint right on this, and this is to start putting down a piston. Now this single axis joint is going to allow the piston to stay perfectly flat, while also being able to push in and out the disc. Now the reason that I needed to rotate the disc here, is that I'll have something for the piston to be able to push in, and by pushing out the part of the disc that's tilted out, it'll rotate it around, and if I keep doing that with multiple pistons, I'll be able to get continuous rotation. Now you'll also see here, I was starting to build up something to hold in the piston, but I was having a lot of trouble where it just kept clipping into the piston. So I tried a few different things, but ultimately I had a pretty loose fit on it, but I was hoping it was going to be good enough. Unfortunately though, when I went to test this out, it seemed to not really work. You can see it start to rotate here, but then it ends up stopping and the entire piston is also starting to rotate. That's definitely bad, and if the pistons aren't able to just freely be attached to the wheel, then the wheel isn't going to be able to rotate at all here. Now I decided to remove the piston, and you can see here I'm able to manually push in and out this disc, so in theory this design should work, but for whatever reason, once I attach the piston, it's not working anymore. Now I figured maybe what I needed to do was try to attach a thruster to the piston and get it to push in and out the disc. Now I also added a piston onto the bottom just to give me a bit more power when I need it. And with that done, put down a thruster on the end of each of these. And after that, you see here I'm making a little channel for these pistons to ride in. This is to prevent them from just falling on the ground. And once I got the first one in place here, I also extended it out to the top. Now I wanted to give it a test here, but again, it just wasn't really moving. And no matter how much I tried to move it either manually or with the pistons, it just didn't work. It was just acting like it was totally locked locked in place. Now I removed the pistons again just for testing, and it seemed to be performing fine. Whenever I pulled it in and out, you can see the disc on the back is rotating around, and that is what I want to see. So I was really wondering why these pistons just didn't seem to be working once they were attached. Now I decided to remove one of the discs, and I thought the problem might have been that my discs were a little too thick. If that happens, it does make the geometry a little bit awkward, and I could see the pistons kind of getting binded up, especially on the top and the bottom of the rotation. So I exchanged the discs for thinner ones here, and after that I re-rotated it in place. But when I went to reattach the pistons here, you'll also notice I'm adding in another single axis joint. This one is rotated in the opposite direction, and once I did that, it all made a lot more sense here. You can see as I attach the piston up, how the first single axis joint is tilted, and the second one is also tilted slightly up. That means that I can attach the piston directly to this, and that seemed to be the cause of all of my problems. Right here, I'm manually rotating the discs around, and you can see as it starts to rotate, it actually does drive the piston in and out. Now, that was a really good sign, and I figured that next step was just to get thrusters on his pistons and see if I could rotate it around like that. So with the two of those in place, I gave it a test here, but again, it just stopped working, and I thought that maybe it was a force issue, so what I wanted to try doing here was replace the pistons with these plasma cannons. Now the plasma cannons shoot out a ball that produces a really strong amount of force, and you can see here as I shoot around the remainder of this piston, it really starts to move around. So I figured maybe if I added some more of these on here, I could automatically have them shoot this disc and move it around the way I want. It seemed like it really didn't want to rotate it around though, because while it was producing a ton of power, it just wasn't rotating the disc at all. Now, as a last ditch effort here, what I wanted to try doing was adding on four pistons and seeing if maybe that would improve things. In theory, that's double the power, and it should have a pretty easy time of moving it. But even at the max thruster power, it still just wasn't moving it. So I figured maybe the problem was that I made it horizontally, so what I decided to do here is make it vertically, and also I'm making it a little bit bigger. That I thought should improve things as well, and once I got those two discs put in place, you can see here I'm starting to rotate them down. Now 
that done, I added back in my pistons here, and it was in a pretty similar way to before. The only thing that's different is the way that I'm holding them. Instead of having an entire channel to hold these in place, I'm just adding a single ring and locking that in place. So once I got that ring in for all of the pistons here, I wanted to give it a test with some thrusters. And you can see here, it actually is starting to move slightly to the side, but it still seems to be getting stuck quite a bit here, and I figured I could do a lot better. So here what I'm doing is basically repeating the design, but I'm making it a lot bigger. You can see here, I'm using some huge discs, the absolute maximum size I can. And after that, I stacked a second one on there, and you can see just how close these discs are together. So with that done here, you can see I'm starting to build up my pistons really similarly to before. Now with that rod in place, you can see after that, I'm starting to build up that ring to hold in the piston. Now I decided to do this here pretty loosely, because I didn't want to hold on to it too tight and cause a lot of friction. So with that made, I added on another rod right on top of this, and on that, I put down a thruster. Now just giving this a test with a single piston here, it seemed to be a little weak, so I figured maybe if I added on more thrusters, I'd get a better result. And giving it a test here, Finally, you can see as I turn it on, it moves over to the side, and just giving it a small nudge, it actually seemed to push it all the way down here and start to move it. Now, that was an amazing sign, and the next thing I wanted to do here was get on all the other pistons and see if I could get this to continually rotate. Now, adding these on was really similar to before, and it was pretty much just copy-paste and making sure all the angles are right. And giving it a test here, it actually does seem to rotate around, and you can see that the disc starts to tilt around. Now, to get this to automatically run, I put down a gyroscope, and I'm going to use the output of this gyroscope to figure out which thrusters need to be on at any time. So I put down the thrusters down in the programming board and also the gyroscope node, and I did a little bit of math here with range testers to figure out which needed to be on. And it took a little while to figure out what was happening, but eventually here you can see it does start to rotate, but it does still seem to get stuck quite often. So I figured maybe just where thrusters was the way to go here, and that's exactly what I did next. So now moving on to six thrusters, I have quite a bit more power, and you can see I get some pretty decent rotation. Now, one thing I realized I could optimize is actually turning on two pistons at once, because by doing that, I get a much more continuous output, and it gets stuck a lot less often. Now, I also added on some rods here, just to make it a little more obvious as the disc rotates around, and with those in place here, I wanted to give it a test, and it seemed to be pretty good. It would still get stuck occasionally, but for the most part, it rotated around okay, and I figured with some tuning, I could definitely get this to power a car. And you can see here my improved design, and it seems to be quite quite a bit better. It seems to rotate at a pretty good speed here, and the next step was really just to optimize this and get it to go a lot faster. I wanted to try adding in the plasma cannons here, and just seeing if I could get power out of them. The thing is, these in theory were going to be really powerful, but controlling them was kind of difficult here, and they just kept slamming on the pistons, and after doing that for a while, all the pistons sort of just came out of their holders, and then just broke off. So I put the pistons all back in place, and once that was done here, I just sort of tuned a few things up, and I also added on three more thrusters. This made an enormous difference, and you can see the amount of speed I get out of this thing. It's honestly pretty good, and next thing I want to do here is add on a gear and start hooking this up to some wheels. Now, to do that, I put down a cube here, and on that, I put down another cube, which I stretched down. This allows me to attach a servo here and a disc, and on that disc, I'm putting down some rods. Now, if I shrink them down here, I can sort of make gear teeth, and I was hoping I could add another gear in and start connecting it up to some wheels. So, once I got all those teeth put in place here, you can see I'm giving it a test. And while it does slow down the engine a little bit, it seemed to be okay, and it was only slightly off-center. So I copied that gear over here and put it on the side. And with that done, I attached it up here, and it really slowed things down a lot, but it did seem to work, and I figured once I turned off friction for all of the gear teeth, it should also improve things quite wait a bit. Now to get this attached to a wheel here, you can see what I'm doing is putting down a cube, I'm stretching it back, and I'm putting down another cube on that, and on that, I'm finally putting down the wheel. Now once I found roughly the center, I kind of got it working here, and while it was bobbing up and down a little bit, it did seem to mostly stay where I wanted it to, and it was rotating. So of course, I wanted to add on a wheel to the other side as well, and this one is a lot easier since I didn't have that cube in the way. So you see here, I just put down this wheel, and after that, it seemed to be working pretty well. So with that done, I wanted to start adding on the front wheels here, and building up the rest of the car. So after putting down a couple of wheels on servos here, that should let me freely rotate, and with that done, I just need a way to lock in the engine. This was a lot harder than I thought, because I need some way to hold it in place while also not intersecting with any points that I put down. So it took a little while to get this right, and you can see I built up this sort of box-like thing around the base of the engine, but I did manage to get it all held in place, and with that done, it was time to hold in the pistons. Now to do that, I built up these long rectangles here, and I brought them all the way up to the 
the top, and with that done, I just started putting down more and more of these to hold in the pistons. Now, these needed to be pretty tight, but not too tight, or else the pistons would bind, so it took a little while to get everything right here. I was also a little bit worried about maybe these rectangles bowing, since they're so far away from the point I attached them to, but since this game has such good joints, nothing ever seems to bend, and once I get it all in place here, you can see it does actually seem to be working. In fact, it seems to be going a lot faster than before, so for whatever reason, this really seemed to improve things. Now, I wanted to see if I could attach this onto the ground, and it did seem to work here. I got it on the ground, and after that, I just ended up fixing the pistons, because they did fall out for some reason, and now with everything ready to go, I started it up. And it was starting to tilt back a lot, but at the same time, it was rotating the wheels around, so I figured next what I wanted to do here was add it on a docking station, and figure out a way to control this. So once I got that down there, I started attaching it to a few gates, and this is just adjusting whether the engine should rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. Now overall, it did seem to be moving back pretty well here, so I wanted to add in a few more single axis joints, and I'll have these act as my steering. You can see here, I put down a joystick, and I used some logic here to make it, so as I tilt it to the left or right, it starts to steer me in those directions. Now I hooked it up slightly wrong at first, and you can see they ended up just kind of going in and out, but with a little bit of tuning, I did get that fixed, and you can see some final shots of it moving here. So guys, thanks for watching. This might be one of my last videos on Plasma for a little while, so now the demo is unfortunately over. I definitely have a whole bunch of stuff planned though, and if you guys have any ideas, make sure to let me know down in the comments. Now, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you have any other questions or comments, also make sure to leave those down below, and otherwise, till next time.